Welcome and bonjour. This time we've got a geography now of France. Oh, you nearly confused me there. Okay? <laughs> 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 bonjour. <laughs> Au revoir and all that sort of stuff. I could oh, not yes. do French at school. I was rubbish at it. Je m'appelle oh. David. Dave. No, I do very broken French. Yes. Uh, yeah, right. Yeah. Um, so yeah, we're going through all the geography now here at, uh, at Hike Train anyway. Um, we just done... Finland recently, we've done China, yeah. we've done Russia, that was a great one as well. To be fair, quite a lot of them are great anyway, but... Yeah, I enjoyed Finland. Um, seems like a lot of people have. It's been doing very well, thank you yeah, very much. Yeah, thank you for so, watching our Finnish one and yeah. our Russia, etc. Um, and the journey one's like a hundred odd thousand views, or whatever it is. And so. France is a place I would love to go. I, it's not only across the sea, but I just haven't yep. had a chance Kev's to go Kev's lazy, well, so be yes. I actually did go when I was a kid. When I was doing judo, I went there once. But he's old, went so he can't a, remember it. Great big place in Paris. It's a huge place where they had dozens of mats in there. It's fantastic. So I can remember the ice cream was very expensive. I couldn't afford one. In Still probably can't sc- now. No. So <laughs> help, help Kev buy an ice cream by joining oh, our Patreon. Oh, we yeah. can get all these on early access and other things, etc. Uh, yeah, other than that, um, be sure to subscribe. I think I said that already, but don't worry about it. And let's go for it. Comme certains d'entre vous le savent, en huitième de mois est français. Ah, J'ai really? donc en quelque sorte en obligation de honorer mon héritage. <laughs> it's time to learn geography. Now! Hey everyone, I'm your host Barbie. Ah, France. Pretty much everybody on the planet has heard of this place. I mean, immediately images of wine, cafes, mm. embellished 18th century Baroque architecture, and people who really hate globalization of the English language. But take a step back even further, and France becomes a place with jaguars, coconuts, mm. volcanoes, penguins, grass skirts, war dances, bamboo flutes, witch doctors, and a multifaceted history that has evolved into a people group into becoming one of the most notable nations on the planet. Alors, allons-y. <laughs> The first thing you need to know about France is that it's not just European, but a transcontinental country that spans across 12 time zones, more than any other country in the world. Mais comment est-ce que possible? Yeah. Laissez-moi expliquer, gros garçon. France is kind of divided into two main parts. The European metropolitan France, where about 95% of the population lives, yeah. and the overseas French regions, departments, and territories. I'm like, I can't go in there. Yeah, yeah. I was a bit confused. Or mm. Dom Tom. Before we tell you what they are, let's explain the difference between them. Regions have exactly the same legal status as mainland France and the same civil, penal code, and administrative social tax laws. However, they can be slightly adapted to suit the region's particular needs. In collectivities, the autonomy rises and they are empowered to make their own laws except in certain areas like defense, currency, trade, and diplomacy. The overseas regions are Guadeloupe and Martinique in the Caribbean, French Guyana in South America, which by the way has the Kuro Space Center disputably the best in the world because it adds an extra gravitational slingshot effect because it's so close to the equator of the Earth, and Reunion and Mayotte off the coast of East Africa. The overseas collectivities are French French Polynesia, you've probably heard of Tahiti, that's French Polynesia, as well as Wallace and Futuna I've, in the Pacific, St. Pierre de Micalone right off the coast of Canada, St. Barlemy and St. Martin, I which is the only place are. in France that has a border with the Netherlands as the Dutch own the southern part of the island, located all in the Caribbean. The only islands that lie under the title of overseas territories are the French Southern and Antarctic Islands, or the TAAF. These islands are made up of the Coelan Islands, the St. Paul and Amsterdam Islands, you can probably guess who used to own those, the Crozet <laughs> Islands, and and Adeliland, the claimed slice of Antarctica that is technically not recognized thanks to the Antarctic Treaty. And as of 2007, the scattered islands in the Indian Ocean, remember the Comoros episode, were added to make the fifth district of the territory, even though half of them are disputed with Comoros, Seychelles, and Mauritius. These islands are mostly uninhabited and only house temporary Beautiful. military or scientific personnel. Finally, France administers two special territories that don't quite fall into any of the previously mentioned categories. There's the uninhabited Clipperton Island off the coast of Mexico, which has a crazy murder story behind it. And last but not at least, oh, no, there's is. New Caledonia, which has a special particular status out of the French administered overseas territories. New Caledonia is They're the only one that's vying for places, a kind they? of somewhat independence <laughs> as the political power was passed to the native Kanak peoples. There is a weird dual French EU and New Caledonian citizenship thing going on. And in 2018, they will hold a referendum to either remain or leave France. And thanks to all these territories, they together give France the second largest executive economic zone in the world after the US. Whew. 
You know, let's go back to mm. metropolitan <laughs> Europe, France. The country uh, is located yeah. in Western Europe, bordered by eight other nation states. Don't forget little Andorra and Monaco, <laughs> along the coast by the English Channel and the Bay of Biscay in the north and west, as well as the Mediterranean Sea to the south. Mainland France is sometimes referred to as the hexagon, since if you tilt your head a little bit, it kind of looks like it has six sides. Quite frankly, I was always mm. under the impression that it kind of looked like a teapot with feet. Mainland France is also divided into 13 <laughs> regions, including Corsica Island, 18 altogether if you include the overseas regions, with the capital, largest city, as well as the main cultural and commercial center, Paris. We could talk on and on about Paris, what with the unbelievably designed metropolitan uh, layout, beautiful. the rich, vibrant uh -huh. atmosphere, the juxtaposition of classically adorned uh, historical sites yeah. along neo-contemporary architecture, the food, the shops, and of course, oh. au soleil, sous la pluie, à midi, au oh, minuit, il y a tout ce que vous voulez, au champs Elysees. But that in itself would take too long, and we gotta get through three more segments. The busiest airports are the two Paris twins, Charles de Gaulle and Orly International, as well as Nice, Côte d'Azur, and the second and third largest cities, Lyon, Saint-Exupéry, and Marseille, Provence International. Around 643,000 yeah. square kilometers, yeah. France is the largest country in the EU. The interesting thing about is France it? is that it's kind of divided into areas that historically had their own distinct cultural identity. Some of the most notable ones being Occitania, Savoy, Brittany, Normandy, Alsace, a section of the Basque Country, Nice, and the island of Corsica, which speaks its own dialect most French people can't even understand. These right. regions contribute their own unique know. piece of the French pie. Speaking of pie, we all know about French food, which is great because we're going to discuss more about it in... <laughs> Cheese, if you look at imagine. France's physical Cross makeup, arms. you start to kind of understand why <laughs> food plays such a huge role in their culture. Everything just kind of works out perfectly for them. For metropolitan France, big, rich, nourishing rivers and their tributaries like the Garonne, Dordogne, Loire, Seine, Meuse, and Rhône entangle the entire country north to south, east to west, allowing an abundance of irrigated crop fields to exist in nearly every corner of the country. Now add on top of that the fact that the country does not have any major fault lines. They enjoy a nice oceanic European climate and they don't suffer regularly from any major natural catastrophes. Most of the country is made up of arable flat plains or small rolling green hills that are just begging for cultivation. And voila, you have an agricultural gold mine. In fact, out of every country in the EU, France reportedly has the highest quality of soil performance and resilience, and only a few spots like in the Caucasus region and parts of Eastern Europe and Southern Russia rank higher. So there you go, food haven. In the south, you reach the mountainous regions of France, including the Pyrenees along the border with Spain, the Massif Central Plateaus, one of the most geologically studied places in Europe due to this strange formation, the Alps all along the border, with Italy and Switzerland. By the way, Switzerland was all like, yeah, I'm not gonna share Lake Le Mans, it's mine. And that's how Geneva was born. The highest point in France, let alone all of the EU, is Mont Blanc, found in the French Alps along the border with Italy, only second in height to the Caucasus Mountains in all of Europe. If you consider the Caucasus region a part of Europe, some people don't, but that's just, that's another story. France is a cornucopia of produce, dairy, and meat. Every region has their own specialty, but two things are everywhere, cheese and wine. Oh, the French yes. are the largest consumers cheese, of cheese with most, over 1,200 different yeah, varieties yeah, yeah. found all over the country. The French also have a larger range of unconventionally consumed meat products. Most countries stick with beef, chicken, pork, maybe lamb or goat and fish. However, the French aren't satisfied with just that. Other animals like pheasant, duck, goose, quail, rabbit, venison, veal, horse, frogs and yeah. snails are consumed. Have you ever tried duck? It's too strong for me. I'm, I, uh, You've tried it? Yeah, I'm not, yeah, it's a bit, uh, I don't know what you call it really. It's duck? Yeah, I know, but. Gamey? Yeah, it's, ga it is very game, you know, okay, it's game. Yeah, I know. It's game a lot. I've, I mean, the, the closest we get to having duck here is when you go to your local Chinese. Yeah. I'm assuming it's probably kind of the same, but obviously yeah, you get no. your sauces and that I've over it, your pancake rolls. And 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 really. It's lovely stuff. But it's the cheese that I don't like. You don't like uh, cheese? No. No, neither do I. I'd, I'd like to go to France, but. They'd be all like trying to stick cheese on my plate. And no, I'd but I love there. wine. They can give me a glass of wine or a <laughs> croissant any day. Taking all the stuff uh, from there, he mentioned something right at the start there about volcanoes. Now, obviously, surely they're not active anymore. I haven't uh, heard of any over there going. No, I'd assume over that they yeah. would have. I mean, they've got some hilly, hilly uh, mountainy areas out there, so some there's every chance there would be yeah, some volcanoes, non active areas. ones anymore. But apparently, it's the largest country in the EU. I never knew that. I don't know why. In the in the times, oh yeah, I guess, and in the time zone as well, wasn't it? Because it's well, yeah. spread out. Well, that was so obvious when he started talking about that, though, wasn't it? I'm sort of duh. Yeah, I suppose it's spread out. And as you say, Monaco is right down sort of Italy way, and then you've got it virtually. Well, it is on the shore to England, isn't it? So. Oh yeah, we're neighbours, we're friends. Yeah, I, yeah. I suppose they don't class Russia as part of it. Though. Nope. 
so that's regularly. pretty big. Speaking of which, the national animal is the Gallic rooster, which is why you might typically see a lot of roosters on French affiliated symbols. In fact, France is one of the most entomophagous uh, that's not tried them. countries in Europe, as go. about 700 million snails are estimated uh, to be consumed every year sorry. by the French, especially in Burgundy, the largest oh, snail producing region in France. He, Unfortunately, due to the fact that the French are the highest consumers no. of raw or mildly cooked red meats, a huge portion of the population is either exposed or chronically infected by the Taxoplasma gondii parasite that disputably over half the population is suspected to have. This little oh. guy eventually finds its way wow. into your brain, changes people's behaviors into being either more caring or aggressive and suspicious. Look it up, I'm not even joking. The Alps are famous for their <laughs> wow. charcuterie and fondue, <laughs> Brittany for there. its crepes, Cantal for its chestnuts, Dijon for its mustard, La Veyron for Aligo, Rheim for its champagne, and then we get to Bordeaux. Now, first of all, every region <laughs> of France likes to claim that they have the best wine. However, it's widely known that Bordeaux is disputably the home of the largest wine vineyards in the oh. world, pumping out over half a billion liters of wine a year. The French take their produce maintenance very seriously and became the first country in the world to ban supermarkets from throwing away or destroying unsold food since February of 2016. All businesses must donate wastage to either charities or food France. banks to combat crop they wastage on farms. It. France really has even opened up ugly fruit or vegetable shops in which you can buy disfigured produce for 30% off. Other than foodstuffs though, main exports are aircraft, now, chemicals, machinery, oh, iron, and steel, electronics, motor vehicles, and pharmaceuticals. Of course, the overseas territories and regions also have climates and topographies that are completely different. The Caribbean islands and Guyana enjoy a warm Caribbean tropical climate, Guyana being part of the Amazon, having one of the highest forest cover densities in the world at over 95%, with over 1,100 species of birds and reptiles and mammals found in it. Reunion and Mayotte oh, have France, deep jungle ravines and a constant volcanic yeah. activity going on. The scattered islands are mostly uninhabited, sandbanks and lagoons with nothing more than just a few trees You're and not shrubs. The southern Antarctic front, islands are so rocky yeah. and desolate That's with few of grasses and vegetation. Corellan has these cabbage looking things rules. going on. And these islands typically freeze over in the winter with penguins stampeding off the coast. <laughs> New Caledonia and French Polynesia are tropical Pacific wow. islands that enjoy an abundance of rich, unspoiled, thick jungle brush and colorful flowers. And of course, Adelie Land is like all ice and Antarctica. All right, we've discussed borders, boundaries, mountains, food, volcanoes. Now let's talk about who's running the entire show. France is a country of people that are very, very intent on making sure that you know they are French. First of all, the country has about 67 million people and is the second largest in Europe after Germany, making 13% of the EU alone. About 85% of the population is white, 10% are North African, mostly from the Maghreb regions, a little over 3% are black, and a little less than 2% are Asian. The currency is the Euro, they use the type CEF outlets, and they drive on the right side of the road, which makes things interesting when their neighbors from the UK come across the channel. <laughs> now let's talk about the white people. Most white White French people have some or partial Celtic or Gaulish origins as historically the Gauls inhabited most of the centralized regions of modern day France. That means genetically, the French and British yeah. have a lot more in common than they think. Of course, an admixture of Latin and Germanic roots also applies as all three people groups had their stake of claim in France as well. The name France even came from the Germanic Frank tribe. French is of course the official language. However, regional dialects do exist, but for the most part, they do pretty well at making sure everyone speaks it. Granted, the linguistic zones that we mentioned before each have their own flag, still cling on to their mother tongue, and sometimes you can even find street signs written in these languages. For example, Breton, a Celtic-based language related to Welsh and Irish found in Brittany, Basque in the Basque country, Occitan in Occitania. Corsicans have like this strange half French, half Italian hybrid thing going on. Keep in mind though, most of the languages spoken in the linguistic zones are kind of dying out and only the older generation really retains daily conversation in those languages. <laughs> Outside of metropolitan France, the overseas departments and territories each speak French, but in addition typically have some or dialects. For example, so, in the Caribbean, yeah. Martinique yeah. and Guadeloupe might say, Sac à marché, tout bon man, timal man. In Reunion or Mayotte, they might say, Coiffe, comment il est, à où? France is the most visited country in the world, as more people than the entire population of France visit France annually at about 80 million. <laughs> Culture wise, there is too much to discuss. I mean, we are talking millennia of tribes, wars, empires, heroes, villains, artists, poets, architects, kings, queens, guillotines, revolutions, <laughs> inventions, music, dance, clothing, fashion, cinema, cuisine, discoveries, victories. A huge losses, history, folklore, science, right literature, medicine, and baguettes. To cover it all, we would need a whole separate YouTube though, channel. But for what it's worth, country, since the Middle Ages, France the has been able to show time after time again that it has been a global force to be reckoned. I mean, the French at one point in time had the second largest empire in the world, spanning across virtually every region on every continent. Wow. One thing you have to understand is that in a fast-growing, anglophone-driven global economy, France is very, very firmly intent on preserving the French language and culture. The governmentally sanctioned Académie Française has aimed at doing this since 1634. They do things like, somewhat unsuccessfully, banning foreign words such as blog, hashtag, parking, 
email, and weekend. In addition, the French media's top regulators, the CSA and CNC, have strictly enforced policies that require all music on private radio to be at least of 40% French origin and 70% in the French language between the hours of 8 a.m. to 8 p.m., and half of the music quota must be less than six months old. Everything must be French. France is, of course, home to a plethora of notable figures in every field of academia and athleticism. I mean, they have almost 70 Nobel Peace Prize winners, including famous chemist Pierre and Marie Curie. Few people know that they had a daughter who also became a notable scientist. Other scientists, yeah, no. writers, and philosophers like Descartes, Pascal, Baudelaire, Flaubert, Pasteur, Châtelet, Bouton, who, by the way, invented the metric system. Musicians like huh. Ramelot, Lully, Debussy, Jacques Brel, Edith Piaf. Of course, we can't forget the fashion icons Louis Vuitton, Coco Chanel, and Christian Duart. I mean, it's no secret, France is often touted as the fashion capital of the world. Artists yeah. like Monet, Cézanne, Renoir, Degas, Manet, and Gauguin. And of course, what's an episode about France without mentioning anything about kings Louis the 14th and 16th, Joan of Arc, and Napoleon? In a simple way of putting it, French culture is very vibrant and yeah. proud. The French love where they've come from and how they go about doing things. The Catholic Church once played a major role, and to this day, even as a secular state with dwindling church attendees, many French people still, in the very least, identify nominally as Catholic, mostly for a cultural thing. It's just their history and they don't want to toss it away. They also love taking breaks and getting their sleep. On average, the French get about 8.83 <laughs> hours much? of sleep every day, more than any other country in the developed world. And they also have some of the shortest work weeks with only about six to seven yeah, hours on average story. a day. And that's yeah. enough for them. It's not uncommon to see people taking time off in the middle of the day, early <laughs> evening, just to relax and wow. take a nap. They even well, have yeah. a word for it, l'heure de l'apéro, which literally oh, wow. translates to the hour of the aperitif. People can oh, also like claim that. state pension at age 62, making it one of the lowest retirement ages oh. In the world, and of course, the sport uh, Frenchman the France. highest in the world. Uh, uh, yeah, going on strike. I mean, the last thing you want to do is interrupt the Frenchman's the nap during a six hour shift with right, corporate on, policy yeah. changes. Yep, the world can be uh, a cruel, cruel place. Let's see how France survives in the jungle. Every Saturday, they have When it comes to France, they right don't discriminate. Here. They hate everyone equally. No, but seriously, France has their eyes on a few people, and when they see what they like, they cling on and make you a treasure. First of all, Francophone nations and Latin-based former Roman legacy nations generally get the high seats, especially their neighbors like Switzerland, Luxembourg, Italy, and Spain. Quebec, Canada is to France kind of like what the USA is to the UK. They adore each other, they love each other's accents, but they love making fun of each other even more, even though they are really <laughs> close. Algeria, Morocco, and Tunisia are the closest African nations as they make up the largest African immigrant demographics, followed by sub-Saharan African countries like Cameroon and Côte d'Ivoire, or Ivory Coast. For France, Japan is seen as like the epitome of exoticism. Similar to themselves, the Japanese have a rich culture of noble tradition, things like castles, attire, today, yes. and food. Likewise, Japan sort Looking of shares the same one. mutual fascination and see France as like its European I'm alternate universe that. twin. There's no two countries that like to poke fun of and together. borderline harass each other with the French as the UK and the USA. As historical rivals with the UK, I mean, they did have a hundred years war with them, and the USA busting their chops about World War II all the time. All sides like to satirize each other in cartoons and media all the time. Nonetheless, they are actually really close. The UK and France have been crossing borders and intermarrying for centuries. Commerce and student exchanges are high, and the US was helped by the French during the Revolutionary War, and they even gave the Statue of Liberty as a present. So fellow Americans, yeah. thank France for Lady Liberty, okay? It was a kind gesture. France's best friends, though, would probably be Germany and Belgium. It's kind of funny because historically, the only country that was consistently in a opponent of France was Germany. Ever since the split of Charlemagne's empire in three, most of Europe's history was driven by the overarching rivalry between variations of France and all variations of Germany, including the Holy Roman Empire, the Teutonic Order, Prussia, and of course, the Third Reich. But the plot twist was the creation of the EU. Following Robert Schuman's speech that states explicitly that for Europe to even hope to work, the millennia-old rivalry between France and Germany has to be resolved for good. Ever since 1950, France and Germany have taken a lot of political inspiration off of each other. Heads of states have visited each other on numerous occasions, and both countries have been the biggest advocates for the survival of the Union. And Belgium is like their little brother that moved out and got a Dutch-speaking roommate and visits France every so often to raid their fridge and do their laundry. <laughs> In conclusion, the <laughs> Français sont connus pour être intrépides, turbulents, mais qui gardent quand même un certain charme. Ils ont parfois l'air de s'envoler, mais bon, essaye de vivre dans un pays envahi 24 heures sur 24, 7 jours sur 7, par des hordes de touristes qui piétinent vos jardins, massacrent votre gastronomie, et vous demandez de vous plaire au moindre de leur désir sans même vous dire un petit merci. Oh, France, faut le comprendre. Stay tuned. France's rich former little colony, Gabon, is coming up next.
very intriguing oh. there. They say we have very close ties here from the yeah. UK and to France, but I get a feeling of some of that might change a little bit now we have left the EU. Yeah, it's sort of not quite working out how everyone wanted, is it? Um, well, no, if you aren't actually aware, the UK did leave the EU literally in the last uh, few weeks or so, and so. as far as the actual trade routes and everything goes, Boris Johnson at the moment is Carla playing hardball by the sounds of it, and it's going to drag out for some time until we decide how mm. easy it is going to be to cross the yeah. channel. Yeah, I'm sure we're friends. And I'm sure we'll I'll still be able to go again. on holiday there at some I'm point. I'm sure you will at some point. Yeah, I'm looking forward to, to be able to go up the Eiffel Tower. I never managed to go there. Have you I been went. up the Eiffel Tower? It's another place it I must admit awesome. I would love to visit. It looks stunning, yeah. doesn't it? Let's be honest. Yeah. The, 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 the city of love. That's it, yeah. Just, just, I mean, Is it still the city of love? That's what I used to hear it was called. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, I know they have a few problems there with things, but I mean... They have a few problems I at mean, the minute, aren't they? Yeah. Like you said, I see this, there's yeah, some stuff going on at the moment yeah, with like with a bit... Ma like Macron's having a bit of a problem. There is a, a... I think they're having some sort of government sort of vote thing going on the next couple of weeks, and he's not doing too well on that, but... I've had a lot of friends go to visit France, all over France as well, and they yeah. rave about it. They think it's fantastic. Everyone that said, if you go to France, try and speak in French, even if you can't because they'll respect it much more and they will help you out and that much more and I, I can understand I'd get that, that with yeah. any country to be fair Probably why we, you, we us English we are lazy let's be honest a lot are uh, yeah yeah, there's a lot of there's a lot of expat areas over there as well and there where it's all, a lot of English goes so it's obviously quite nice out there you know you've got oh, the south all France. that wine and all that cheese what else do you need mm, yeah yeah I don't know what I'd do I about don't cheese. Need the cheese but no but um, as I've already mentioned though leave your thoughts down yeah. in the comments below if you're still here thanks for joining us and we'll see you all soon catch you on the flip side <laughs>